Ever imagine like a tiny river in your body, just completely blocked, no flow, nothing. Yeah. And then picture someone trying to reopen it, but with these super tiny tools, thinner than a hair. Wild, right? That's almost impossible. That's what treating chronic total occlusions or CTOs is all about. We're diving deep into these procedures and the problem solving is amazing. But before we get started, a huge shout out to London Heartbeat Z Academy UK for helping us out with this one. Absolutely. They have over 150 courses, so if you're interested, definitely check them out. And to keep up with all their discussions, make sure to subscribe to their social media, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. You won't want to miss those. Welcome, everyone, to our deep dive into the world of CTOs. All right, let's do this. So, Title slide, good morning, everyone. Today, we're diving into the fascinating world of chronic total occlusion. CTO techniques. Let's embark on this journey together to understand the intricacies of CTO procedures and how we can improve patient outcomes. CTO procedure steps imagine you're standing at the starting line of a race. To successfully navigate a CTO procedure, you need a clear roadmap. We begin with simultaneous angiography to visualize the occluded vessel. Next, we assess the complexity using the JCTO score, which helps us predict the difficulty of crossing the occlusion. We then engage with carefully selected guides that provide the necessary support. Shaping the guide wire is like crafting a key to fit a unique lock. It must be done with precision. We advance the microcatheter to the proximal stump, enter the proximal cap, negotiate the wire through the body of the occlusion, and finally exit into the distal true lumen. Once there, we switch to a workhorse wire, remove the microcatheter, and proceed with ballooning and stenting. But our job isn't done yet. We must rule out any complications to ensure a safe outcome. Angiogram analysis now. Let's pause for a moment and think about the importance of reading the angiogram thoroughly. It's like studying a map before a long journey. We need to examine the proximal segment, the origin of the vessel, and any proximal disease. We look at the proximal cap to see if it's ambiguous or well-defined. We search for microchannels, islands of normal lumen, and assess the tortuosity, calcification, and length of the occlusion. We also consider the distal target vessel disease, any branches at the distal cap, the exit angle, and the presence of interventional collaterals. This comprehensive analysis is crucial for planning our approach. JCTO score details let's delve into the JCTO score, a tool that helps us predict the likelihood of successful anti-grade crossing within 30 minutes. It's like a weather forecast for our procedure. We consider factors such as the length of the occlusion, the angulation of the vessel, the shape of the proximal cap, the presence of calcification, and any previous failed attempts. Each factor adds a point to the score, and a lower score indicates a higher chance of success. Understanding the score is essential for setting realistic expectations and choosing the right strategy. Strategies for CTO in our quest to conquer CTOs, we have several strategies at our disposal. Think of them as different pads up a mountain. We can use anti-grade wire escalation, gradually increasing the stiffness of our guide wire to cross the occlusion. Alternatively, we might opt for retrograde wire escalation, approaching the occlusion from the opposite direction. Anti-grade dissection reentry and retrograde dissection reentry are other options, where we create a dissection plane and re-enter the true lumen. Often, we combine these techniques to achieve success. Remember, there's no one-size-fits-all guide wire for CTOs. Each case requires a tailored approach. Anti-grade wire escalation techniques let's focus on anti-grade wire escalation, a technique that's like navigating a maze. We use microchannel probing to find small channels within the occlusion, loose tissue tracking to advance through less dense areas, and penetration to push through tougher segments. Sometimes, we combine these methods for the best results. It's a delicate balance of skill and strategy. Wire shaping with Gaia now. Let's talk about wire shaping, a critical skill in CTO procedures. The Gaia wire is a fantastic tool with a pre-shaped microcone tip that retains its shape well. This feature is invaluable for maintaining control and precision during the procedure. It's like having a reliable compass on a challenging hike. Microchannel probing tips and tricks microchannel probing is an art form. It's not just about seeing the microchannel and navigating it. Many of these channels are invisible. Even in ambiguous stumps, an invisible microchannel might exist. We keep the tip of the wire straight and stop when it buckles, relying more on visual cues than tactile feedback. 
Let me share a case with you where we used the JCTO score to guide our approach and employed microchannel probing with the Fielder XDR wire. We confirmed the true lumen position using visual cues like aspirating blood and checking for pressure waveforms. Penetration techniques when it comes to penetration, we use harder, tapered tip guide wires like the Confianza Pro 12. It's like using a chisel to break through a tough rock. We identified the direction of penetration carefully, using it for straight, hard, short distances. We ensure strong backup and use double lumen catheters for added support. Remember, no rotations, just a strong push. Redirection with Gaia redirection is another crucial skill, and the Gaia wire is our ally here. We use visual cues to identify when it's time to redirect the wire. Imagine you're adjusting your sails to catch the wind. That's what we do with the Gaia wire. We track through loose tissue and redirect as needed to stay on course. Handling bad distal segments, what happens when the CTO wire goes to a bad distal segment? It's like taking a wrong turn on a road trip. We have options like parallel wiring, redirection of the wire, star, ADR, and X-cart. Each method is a different way to get back on track and reach our destination. Parallel wiring tips parallel wiring is like having a second set of eyes on the road. We use a second, harder wire with a different tip direction. We keep the micro catheter in the first wire if possible and use double lumen catheters for added support. It's a team effort to navigate the occlusion successfully. Redirection into subintima when the wire exits into the subintima, we need to redirect it back into the true lumen. It's like correcting a detour on your journey. We use the Gaia wire for this, carefully adjusting its direction to re-enter the correct path. Post-stenting procedures after stenting, we perform routine intentional distal descalation or ride. It's like ensuring the road is smooth after construction. We use the Fielder XDR wire for this, ensuring the stability and safety of the stent segment. Combination of wiring strategies often, we need a combination of wiring strategies to conquer a CTO. It's like using different tools in a toolbox to fix a complex problem. Each case is unique, and our approach must be flexible and adaptive. Puncture with Confianza Pro 12 for puncturing through the occlusion, we use the Confianza Pro 12 wire. It's like using a drill to break through a tough barrier. This wire is essential for tackling challenging segments. Routine intentional distal descalation lets revisit ride, an important post-stenting procedure. We use the Fielder XDR wire to ensure the distal segment is stable and safe. It's a crucial step in ensuring the long-term success of the procedure. Wire cross time in one of our cases, the wire cross time was remarkably quick. It's like finding a shortcut on a long journey. This efficiency is what we strive for in every procedure. Common failures in early CTO career at the beginning of a CTO career. Failures are common. It's like learning to ride a bike. You fall a few times before you get the hang of it. Even shorter distances can be challenging to cross. But with persistence and practice, success becomes more achievable. Summary for beginners for those starting their CTO career. Remember these key points. Read the angiogram thoroughly. Score the CTO using the JCTO score and use anti-grade wire escalation. Understand that failure is closer than success, but don't be discouraged. Be prepared to reattempt the procedure and take your time to slowly learn all the CTO techniques. It takes years to master, but with dedication, you will surely reach your goal. Case example one, let me share a case with you to illustrate these techniques. A 52-year-old male had a CTO in his coronary artery for a year. We used microchannel probing with the Fielder XDR wire, relying on visual cues to confirm the true lumen position. It's a real-world example of how these techniques can be applied effectively. Case example two, in another case, we used the Gaia wire for redirection. We tracked through loose tissue and used visual cues to adjust our approach. This case highlights the importance of adaptability and precision in CTO procedures. Case example 3 Hey Race a case where the wire exited into the subintima and we used parallel wiring and redirection to get back on track. It's a testament to the importance of having multiple strategies at our disposal. Case example 4 In this case, we used routine intentional distal descalation post-stenting. We employed the Fielder XDR wire to ensure the stability of the stent segment. It's an example of how post-stenting care is crucial for long-term success. Case example 5 Finally, let's look at a case where the CTO wire went to a bad distal segment. We use techniques like STAR, ADR, and XCART to navigate back to the true lumen. It's a reminder that even when things go wrong, we have tools to set them right.